Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special conversation that we are going to have with Rosie Stancer. I am Jeanette Marks, the CEO of Air Swift, and we have been sponsoring Rosie with her next expedition. So coming to you today, Rosie Stancer, Palm Oliver, and their team are undertaking the first full crossing of the Aral Kum in Kazakhstan. This is one of the world's youngest deserts previously classified as a sea. The expedition will cover an excess of 600 kilometers over unforgiving grit, sand, and mud in 30 degrees Celsius plus heat. Rosie has been kind enough to give us some of her time before she embarks to talk about her experiences and her preparation for such an enormous undertaking. Rosie, it's so great to have you with me today. Uh, it's great to meet you, albeit virtually, and to meet the rest of the team, because we're all part of the same team now. So hello, everyone. <laughs> we are part of the same team. So we've been very excited to support you through this. And uh, I think it'd be great for our viewers to know, I mean, this is this is such a large scale project um, to explore, you know, they're all whom. How do you prepare for such a large scale project? There's a lot that you have to do um, out of respect as much as anything else for the environment which you're going into. So you might start with doing some in-depth research into the area which you're um, going into and the communities and also all the logistics attached to safety uh, and and communications, etc. And then, of course, you you have to train not just physically um, and specifically to how you're going to do the expedition, but also you have to train in the pertinent skills to whatever you're doing. And in this instance, for the Aral Kum, it's all to do with desert survival. And if there's one thing as I've learned, it's not to presume what one knows. We've actually got a great silent team behind us. We've, we've got a base camp manager, Steve Jones. Uh, we have the lady who runs the website, Deborah Davidson. And, and of course, we have a stable of wonderful like-minded sponsors, such as with Logistics for the whole pulling together of everything that I've just mentioned in this instance for Kazakhstan are furiously complex. Um, not only because it's Kazakhstan and it's that part of the world and they're very, as you know, very tight on their security, but also because of all the uh, COVID restrictions. And I can assure every one of you out there that there is no way we'd have got even close to this point without your help on the logistics and the freight. I'm glad we were able to be in country and to be able to support you through that. It is a lot of work that you've put into this expedition. And I think when you think about all that work and all the people that are helping to make this come become a reality, share with us what's what's the main motivation? Like why why do an expedition like this? We chose it and we decided to do this because of the message about the environment that it carries. The Aral Kum is now recognized as the world's worst man-made environmental disaster. And I think that the message that we will come back with will be so stark, so shocking, and it'll be relatable to everyone because it has happened so fast that it will really be a clarion call to people and to individuals to wake up and seize responsibility. So the legacy that this expedition comes with is a very weighty one. Send chills down my spine as we think about the gravity of this expedition and what not only you'll see firsthand, but what others will learn um, as a result of your journey as we follow you along through it. Um, and what we can do then, you know, as mankind to, to make sure that we're preventing 
things like this happening in the future as well. It's a bit like that saying, if you give a little tug at nature, the rest of it comes along with it. (laughs) (laughs) And the far-reaching effects of of draining of the Aral Sea uh, has has really had an awful impact on, obviously, the community, Mm -hmm. um, the environment, the flora, the fauna. Um, You know, it's, it's really shocking, and it's so visible. I think what you're talking about, too, is adversity, because through all of that, I'm sure lots of decisions were made that uh, ended up where we're at today. Yet when you're going on an expedition, you run into a lot of adversity. And I would say in life right now, especially with COVID and what people have been faced with over the last 18 months, we run into adversity quite a, quite a lot. So from your perspective, um, being a veteran at, at doing these, these really successful expeditions and bringing um, information to light to others, what are what's some of your advice for dealing with adversity? I think that, uh, first of all, you've got to believe and believe with passion in your end goal, what it is that you're, you're driving at. People think that, particularly in the world of, of exploration and expeditions, it's all about physical brawn and bulging biceps. But actually, it's all about what's in the, the head and the heart. It's, it's about mental strength. And if you can tap into your resources or mental strength, you can meet head on all and any adversity and overcome it. And I think I, think I learned that when I began in, in the world of exploration, particularly polar. And I realized I wasn't really cut out for the job spec. <laughs> it wasn't tall, hairy with a beard and bulging biceps, as I said. But um, I had my own determination and my own unorthodox way of finding solutions to everything because I just believed in, in getting to that end point. I, I was determined. So I think you you have to have that ability to tap into your inner resources and is fascinating. We all have immense strength and potential. You and Palm are about to go on this expedition and be isolated by yourselves for, you know, for for the length of time it's going to take you to cross um, with, you know, a lot of adversity and and, and issues that are going to really challenge your mental stamina. (laughs) But how, how do you deal with your feelings of isolation through a journey like this? Isolation is fascinating. And maybe this is why I always do, well, it is why I always undertake physiological research on every single expedition I do, which taps into not just the physical wear and tear that you're going through, but how you're matching up mentally as well. And one of those key areas within that research is uh, coping and contended, contending with isolation. And Quite often, I think um, what worries people maybe about isolation is it it gives them a sense of helplessness as much as anything else. And you have to learn to be resourceful and believe in yourself in terms of being resourceful and not to be frightened of um, having the time to get to know yourself because our lives go so quickly, so fast at the moment, and they're so cluttered, you know, there's so much noise going on virtually, that we don't really give time to nourish ourselves. And there's absolutely no harm in that definition of being selfish every now and then to look after yourself and to find out who's in there. When you're on an expedition, it tends to strip away all the layers or that sort of social armor you build up around yourself. And it's very important that you know and that you like what's there underneath. And I think one must give oneself the chance to actually do that. You're throwing yourself right in the middle of adversity, challenge, physical, mental, and you're right. What's left is you to, to persevere and showcase your own strength. Yes. And I think that 
at the end of the day, even in the most rigorous of, of challenges, um, if you've got the mental wherewithal, you can contend with and get through the physical exhaustion, um, the hunger, um, the loneliness, and quite often the pain. And it's it's a source of great strength. It's a propulsion. Absolutely. So I think if if I know it's difficult, but if people can look upon isolation not with hostility, but with a sense of positive. Rosie, this sounds absolutely amazing. And I think so many people are going to want to be on this journey with you and follow you and support you. Uh, how how can they do that? How can people follow you? Oh, it'd be great when you keep on calling because that, that really helps keep one going. And, and also you don't dare give up if you know people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So no, we want to follow you. So how 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 can we follow you? <laughs> okay, well, uh, uh, probably the most readily, so to speak, would be via Instagram. And my Instagram name is, and it's all in one breathless name, Rosie Stancer Explorer. And then there's a website, which is rosiestancer.com, um, which uh, sounds a bit egocentric, but there is, you'll find there the, the under expeditions, the Arrow Kum, which is the sort of headliner, of course, at the moment. No, we definitely want to make sure that our viewers and those interested in really seeing this um, firsthand through your eyes um, have an opportunity to be able to really see the, the change um, that has happened here. And again, this has all been driven from human decisions and human interaction in this area that's created, you know, the world's youngest desert, which um, really is something that I think we all need to think about and take a heavy heart with as to how we take care of our earth and how we really create sustainable initiatives around the world and make decisions based on, you know, how we can, can progress and protect different parts of our land as well. So I can't uh, tell you my appreciation enough for one, uh, bringing light to this, uh, going on this expedition, spending two years preparing and pulling together all the necessary resources so that you, Rosie and Palm uh, can have a successful expedition this time around. Um, thank you for sharing about how you overcome adversity and welcome and embrace isolation to be mentally tough and stronger for it and really know yourself. And thank you for the belief that you're, you're sharing with everybody and how we, we share this, uh, share this globally and really open up this conversation to, to others as well. So thank you for your time today, Rosie. And thank you for yours. And thank you all for being such good team players and helping so much to make this, to make it happen, to make it a reality together. Thank you.